Hi guys, welcome back for another episode of Compi EDU. We're here at Umami Mart in Oakland, and I am here with um, co-owner. Yes, Yoko. Yeah. Yoko. Uh-huh. Yes, this is uh, Yoko, and um, she's part owner of the shop. And so today we're going to talk about um, the different types of glassware that um, they bring in from Japan. It's all custom made, um, as well as the diverse beverages. Um, but first, um, let's go ahead and talk about uh, what is what really inspired you to open up this shop. Yeah, so Umami Mart started in uh, 2007. Kayoko, the other owner, and I, we were both living in, like, in different cities. Kayoko was in New York and I was in Tokyo and we were at our desk jobs and we just started blogging about uh, foods and drinks that we were having or, and or making at home in, in those respective cities. Um, and so we were blogging pretty, prolifically like almost every day and then we started to invite some of our friends who are also uh, interested in food and drink and stuff like that so we ended up with about like 15 people uh, internationally people in like Sao Paulo Copenhagen a lot in Tokyo and then also a lot in New York Um, and so that was over 10 years ago now um, and uh, we were all just doing it for fun And then Kayoko and I are originally from the Bay Area. So uh, in 2010, we both found ourselves back in the Bay Area. And we were, you know, we had Umami Mart and we were like, what what should we do with this? You know, um, Mm -hmm. the fees associated with like hosting were really minimal, but we were still like, well, maybe like we can, you know, how are we gonna keep, uh, you know, paying for these fees? And we knew we didn't want ads. So we were like, okay, let's, um, attach an online store to the blog and that's kind of how it happened so we started out uh, online in 2010 and then uh, we uh, opened this uh, store in uh, the brick and mortar in 2012 so it's we're in year seven now wow that's yeah. great so why did you pick Oakland for this location so well I kind of have a history with the East Bay after college in Santa Cruz I moved to Berkeley Um, And so uh, I just love the East Bay. It's always sunny and Mm -hmm. um, and I have a lot of friends and family here. So I really like it in the East Bay. Um, I just like the vibe. It's just easy and um, and also there was no way uh, that Kayoko and I we have like no uh, backing or no, you know, we didn't start out with any kind of like investment or anything like that. So um, San Francisco is not an option. So um, for us, uh, you know, Oakland was like uh, the obvious choice. And also we started out in this space um, through a program with um, the then property owner and the city of Oakland. Um, They were giving out uh, six months rent free in specific areas in the city cities for um, aspiring entrepreneurs. So wow. we just took that chance, and um, and then we were able to sign a lease. So. That's so great. Yeah. yeah, you guys are in a really cool location, right? Pretty much downtown, and you know it would be so hard to get a spot like this in San Francisco. And um, you know we have our spot in Trusake, but it's been there for 16 years now, and so the rent was obviously much lower at that time. But now, you know, businesses are coming and going all the time in San Francisco. So I'm glad there's a spot in Oakland, too. Yeah. Uh, people yeah. come into our shop all the time and, you know, they're asking about, um, oh, do you guys sell glassware, this and that? And we have a very limited selection because we're solely focused on sake. And then people also come in and they're asking about shochu. They're asking about beer. They're asking about Japanese whiskey. And we always send them to Mommy Mart. So, yeah, yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about um, the different beverages you offer and then the different top selling glassware that you guys carry. Yeah. Um, so um, we kind of um, developed our uh, Umami Mart in like different stages. And in 20, um, I think it was, yeah, 2014, we got our beer and wine license, which allowed us to uh, start with the sake and the beer. Um, Japanese uh, craft beers or jibiru um, are definitely gaining more popularity. Um, in uh, the mid 90s, the government lifted a ban on small production uh, beer making, and so that kind of 
um, spurred uh, Japanese craft beer making, or jibiru is the term in Japanese. Um, and I think that there are a few um, that are um, pretty, like, gaining a little bit more popularity in the States, um, Hitachino yeah. in particular. Oh, yeah. Um, we have people coming in, like, asking for the owl beer. Um, now people are, you know, saying it by name, Hitachino, and coming in. Um, they um, have, I think at this point, probably, you know, upwards like 15, 20 um, that are coming into the U.S. and we try to get as many um, of the different styles as we can here. Yeah. Well, on a side note, so mm -hmm. I actually, I used to work at Hitachino Beer and Wagyu oh, over on Post yeah, Street yeah, in San yeah. Francisco. Yes, yeah. yeah. So people yeah. are always asking about where can I get the Hitachino beer? Yeah, yeah. And I came in and I was so surprised to see that you guys pretty much had our entire lineup at, at yeah. the restaurant. Oh, that's so nice, yeah. So 12, 15 at a yeah. time. And yeah. So that was just really great to see. And so I'd always, again, be, hey, mom uh -huh. in Oakland, you know? And, yeah. and they're like, oh, it's, it's kind of far. I'm like, well, not really. You, yeah, you yeah. hop on the bar, you get off at 12th Street, yeah. you go four blocks and you're at Umami Mart. Right? It's pretty simple. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so Hitachino, huge, like very, very popular. Um, and then this is another one like by far, I mean, Japan, the packaging is amazing. So, yeah. but the beer inside is great too, but this is probably one of our best sellers, the Wednesday Cat. Yeah. This comes from uh, Yoho Brewing. They're also uh, probably after Hitachino, the second biggest uh, craft brewery in Japan. So you'll see like they have little brew pubs um, like in Tokyo as well. Um, and uh, the can format is, is definitely, uh, gaining a lot of traction, so people really like getting cans here. So I was gonna ask, uh, why is it that, you know, for example, in the States we have a 12 ounce can mm -hmm. or 16 ounce, but I noticed Hitachino, for example, it's 11.2 right. or 11.16 for the Echigo, yeah. for example. Yeah. Is, um, does that have to do with anything? Yeah, it's really, I mean, that, I don't know specifically, but I mean, um, I, I think it has to do with the metric. Uh, versus Imperial because it's always 330 milliliters. Oh, okay. Um, gotcha. And then we also have uh, like the sakes to come in the specific um, uh, counter or like the way that they count the sake is is specific to sake. Right. Um, and I I think that um, the it, it probably has to do with how the government also, you know, um, counts tanks like how much you're producing you know every year and then okay. you know and then they they um uh divide it and divide it until it, it's the it's like an ideal size for a bottle okay that makes sense yeah because when you know people are saying well why is you know a sake bottle 720 uh -huh. milliliters yeah. versus a 750 yeah. pro or wine bottle in the states well, the thing is, um, if you're doing a proper pour for sake, which is six ounce pour, that's standard for wine as well, you get exactly four cups. But with a 750 milliliter bottle, you're getting four cups and a little splash, which doesn't make a whole lot of right. sense. Yeah. You know? yeah. So yeah. it actually makes more sense to be 720 than 750. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Um, yeah, it's interesting how those like counters are like, a little bit off for Japan. Um, and then I did want to talk about this one, which is the Sancho beer, um, the Sancho ale, um, because we're having a um, festival as part of SF Beer Week um, in about two weeks, a little less than two weeks. Um, it, we do it every year. This is our sixth, to sixth time doing it. Um, we collaborate with the Trappist right around the corner. They're a Belgian beer bar, but they switch out all of their taps for Japanese beers once a year for us. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, um, and that's really fun. And then all of uh, like our, our customers and their customers kind of like pile into their beer garden. And um, we invite uh, Japanese food makers. This year we're having Abudaya doing um, Sancho fried chicken sandwiches. And then uh, we'll also have a special Sancho beer made uh, by Ruben and Old Can, who are based in uh, West Oakland over there. So it'll be like a Sancho fest. And so I did want to. Oh man, mention that's so that great! One. Yeah. Yeah, I want to go. I'm gonna be at a wedding that day. Uh, we, we, we're yeah, marked yeah, out yeah, our yeah. calendars. Yeah. Like, oh man. But, yeah. You know, yes, we could always year. just come by. Yeah, next yeah. year. Yeah. Definitely be here next year. Totally. Cool. 
So uh, we got some glassware mm -hmm. here, um, and we got our top sellers for the sake cups. Yeah. Um, so oh, you, we got the Masu cups yeah. here, which I get really excited about because they're custom made. There's a place in Japantown over in San Francisco that sells these Masu cups, but they're not the real cedar. They don't have any sort of fragrance to them. Okay, okay. And so I come over here specifically okay. to get those, and I drink my taru sake. Out oh, of those. nice. I yes. heat them up. Yeah. And you know, the, the cedar complements the, the cedar taste of the sake. But normally, you would only drink the Masu cups for celebrations and things like that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, like at um, restaurants and stuff, like for, yeah, just kind of for celebration and uh, hosting, uh, the Masu is a very nice um, gesture. But on a, normally, uh, just kind of on a regular basis, you'd fill the cup up mm -hmm. and then it would spill over into this cup. Yes. I know there's. Um, there's a form of hospitality right behind that. Yeah, so um, the idea behind that is that um, you're pouring um, so that the sake is basically overflowing um, to show um, uh, you know, plentifulness, um, to show luxury and kind of uh, to show gratitude. So um, when I lived in Japan, um, the places that I would go to often um, the master or you know the, the izakaya kind of um, owner will come around and he would pour it um, and to the regulars pour just a little bit more you know and yeah. just to kind of like it's a, it's a gesture to show thanks um, and to um, yeah just to like express this kind of idea of um, having plenty Right, and um, uh, omo, omotanashi, right? Yes, kind yes, of going, yes. So omotanashi, it's kind of loosely translated as like going the extra mile for your guests or your friends or something like that. So giving them just a little bit extra is just saying like, we really want you to get your money's worth and it's also a sign of appreciation, like you said, so. Yeah, 